Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Uh, spend some time with us. Rob from Cigar Federation here with you as always, almost always. Uh, we got Logan on uh, Baby Patrol. Logan, how, uh, how are the poopy diapers treating you? They look like Indian curry. <laughs> yellow or green? Uh, mostly yellow. Like squash. I'm more of a, a fan of the green curry myself. Dude, I love all types of curry, just not baby poop curry. Yeah. It's not very cool. Now, I've, I've heard a rumor, and I don't have uh, I don't have kids. I've heard a rumor that like for the first month or so, it doesn't really stink. Is that true? I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't know. She she's let off some growlers, and they have been really rough. <laughs> and she'll come back in eighteen years and watch that and be really embarrassed. But yeah, I mean they've they've been rough. Let's have some growlers. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let's go. I'm glad that everybody's doing well. Uh, our guest today, Andre from Viaje Cigars. Andre, really excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. I think can everyone see me now or? Everybody can see you now. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I think more importantly, thank you to everyone who's listening, watching, YouTubing, chatting, whatever you want to call it. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, we uh, we met Andre for the first time at IPCPR. Uh, just you know, God, what was that two months ago now, almost? Time just, flies. Let me tell you something, guys. That was one of the highlights of the. Uh, the show for me personally. You guys came over, spent some time with me. I got to meet you guys, and I think what we put together one of the more entertaining videos of the show. But I gotta let something out of the bag here. Um, I don't know how truthful you're being with your audience because there is a ton of video footage that people have not seen from the Viaje booth. If you care to uh, take that a little bit further, that's you know you're you're right. We've uh, <clears throat> we do have some B-roll. Um, Wow, my, my video is a little bit slow. That's kind of weird. Uh, the video was catching up. That, that freaked me out. Um, was mine. Yeah, I was watching myself in slow motion catching up. To, <laughs> and it's weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've got some additional B-roll uh, from that uh, from that interview and some other interviews as well. That, uh, from what I understand, uh, our, our conscious Canadian uh, cigar <laughs> surgeon lacking. is going to be putting that together. So what do you, what do you got there? Are we, are we not drinking on this show? You can. <clears throat> totally not. Right? Yeah, you can. I, I'm. I'm personally not. Work. You can. So you post a lot of beer pictures. What is your approximate beer budget per month, Andre? I'm just curious. You know, I've never calculated it, but I will tell you this is one of my favorites. This is a milk stout um, from Left Hand Brewing in Colorado. And what's nice about it is it's uh, it's the nitro version, which I prefer. So you know, I get asked, what do you drink? when you're, you know, smoking cigars, and uh, I find, if we're talking about beer, because, you know, my drinking is not just limited to beers, it runs the gamut, uh, but if we're talking about beers, I tend to think that the darker, sweeter beers tend to go well with tobacco, and you can't, you can't find a better beer than this right here. So, cheers, everybody. <laughs> cheers. <clears throat> yeah, we did, uh, we've got another show that we do some pairings on. We did a beer pairing show uh, a few weeks back. And I, I stumbled upon this beer from Canada, uh, oddly enough, because I was the only person on the show who wasn't from Canada. But uh, it was called Aphrodite, and it was a, uh, a chocolate stout that was brewed with vanilla bean. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I've been we, on I, we believe in drinking on the job, so. <laughs> there you go. Cheers. Well, it's actually, in California, it's after 5 o'clock, so you're not even on the job anymore. You know what? It could be twelve and it could be twelve. It could be one. It doesn't make a difference. We don't. There's no discrimination with time. Any time is fine. <laughs> You're always on the clock. That's good. Um, so we've got a ton of audience questions. We've got some giveaways that we're going to get to a little bit later. Um, let's. You know, one of our uh, one of our favorites uh, here on the show, uh, Shooter McGavin. Love that guy. Screen name, Big Shooter. Um, he asked a very simple question. He was the first person to ask a question, so we're going to address his question first. He says, "Give us the story behind the name Viaje." First off, I'm gonna light up one of these guys. This is oh, uh, off the. Uh, this is one of the latest uh, from the Viaje. It's the um, the latest um, white label project. It's a test blend that we came up with that um, I was really happy with. So that's uh, that's what I'm smoking now. Cool. 
the name Viaje, where did that come from? Yeah. Well, when I was figuring out what I wanted to do with this company, um, I knew that a name is a very important thing. Uh, and I wanted a word that people around the world could relate to. And so I started going back and forth between names, and um, I thought of journey, because I think we are, we're all on a journey of sorts. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and cigars being such a, such a unifier of different types of people as we go on our journey, um, I thought, what a great word. I looked it up, and it uh, happened to translate into Viaje, and I said, I have struck gold. I contacted my trademark attorney, and we put it down, and, uh, you know, that's where it came from. It's the, the ever, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the journey of life, the journey of the uh, cigar, and actually, really, every cigar really does take a journey. It, what's, what are the numbers? It touches, like, 200 hands or something like that before, oh. uh, before it gets probably, to probably, probably more than, I know with the eye, it's probably more than that. Yeah, there you go. So there's, there's another layer to that meaning. Um, uh, yeah. Normally with the show, especially this is the first time since we've had you on, we ask about your history and stuff like that and the new product and everything. We've covered all that in uh, in our interview that we did. If you guys are looking for that one, it's on YouTube. We don't even need to talk about tobacco. What's that? We don't even need to talk about tobacco if you don't want to. <laughs> well, I'm going to go through. We've got, I think, like three pages of audience questions here, so we're just going to start nail racking these out. I got a uh, question. And Logan has a question, too. You can raise it's his hand. It's been burning. It's a burning question. So I'm a bit. I'm a corporate cube monkey working at a corp. You know, uh, well, previously a Fortune 50 company, no longer. But I've got to ask. It's a burning question, right? Viaje's model is small batch produced. You know, ten thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand cigars. So being a businessman and myself, I see no scale in your operations other than, you know, you produce several cigars, maybe in the same factory, but not with the same tobaccos. How do you run your model in a way that works for you doing small batch in an industry that's all about producing more and more cigars at the same time to achieve scale? No, no, yeah. We don't, more and more does not work into the vocabulary. It's less. It's special. It's, uh, it's boutique. Uh, I never wanted to be this, this guy that just mass-produced uh, product. Uh, it's, it's never, it was, it, it didn't even, really didn't even cross my mind. Now, Viaje started, and I've told this story before, Viaje started a lot more traditional. I couldn't, this concept didn't, wouldn't work right out of the gate. People would look, not that they don't now, but people would look at me like I was crazy approaching them to carry my stuff. So we started more traditional with Oro and Platino, but as soon as we started gaining traction, especially after we received the number two cigar rating from Cigar Aficionado, I could, I then implemented uh, my vision for for the brand, and that was to be a uh, small batch. It allows me to stay creative. It doesn't uh, things don't go stale. Um, you know, people like to smoke variety. I see it in every business. I mean, no one no one likes to do the same thing over and over and over again. Eventually, you're going to want to depart. I mean, of course, you have your favorites, but you're going to want to depart. You're going to want to try something new, and that's kind of Viaje's niche. We're always trying to push the envelope and and do something differently. Um, do something different, I should say. So, I mean, look, for instance, you know, we got this thing called Stuffed Turkey, right? Uh, oh, yeah. It started as a white label project. It wasn't even my idea. It was uh, Jerry Cruz's idea. And uh, we went with it. And and now, this the first WLP is getting its own bond. It's graduating from the WLP program. It's getting its own line. Uh, look, look, look at this guy. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's the that's the actual box art. White meat. <laughs> so we got the white meat, and of course, that work here. There you go. Okay. We got the dark meat. So you know we're always trying to do 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 things differently. Um, you know, like I said, that graduated from the WLP. Now it's kind of taken a life of its own. It's, it has its own, you know. Uh, a brand, official brand, packaging, uh, labels, and everything, and then you'll see things morph into into different directions. So I thought to myself, well, if you have the stuffed turkey, right? Well, someone's got to be slaughtering the turkeys. Well, who who's slaughtering the turkeys? Well, that'd be this guy. <laughs> oh my God! Okay. Right? And who and who is that guy? 
Uh, Farmer Bill Hatchet. Hatchet. That's Farmer Bill Hatchet. Now, Via has turned, uh, I mean, uh, this white label project, which started out as a test blend, has turned into a brand, and now the brand already has an extension. So we're just trying to do, I don't know, by the way, I don't even, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. I don't know if this is is addressing your first question. Just continue. you know, we just we just try to do things uh, a little differently. And let me show you. I can I can even further this. I always like to do something special. Whenever I'm doing an interview, I like to draw something that I've never shown anyone before. And so I'll show you guys. Here are the bands. Oh, very cool. Dude, that that's that's awesome. Awesome. There's a stuffed turkey, and look at this guy. Farmer Bill. There's Farmer, Farmer Bill. Bill. So we just like to keep things uh, interesting, be creative, and, and really, if I had to do the same thing over and over and over again, I, I might as well you know pack up my things and, and get out of this business because that's just boring for me. And let me tell you something. It's a lot easier to, to go that way. What I do is a hundred times harder because we'll do a small batch. The factory will forget how to make it, and the following year, if I want to touch it again, I have to go there and teach them again how the whole thing works. So. I literally, at a 24-hour day, I bang my head against the wall for at least 10 of those hours. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, this, this, this is going to be a fun interview. Um, We're just starting. Yeah, we don't even have, you can just keep talking. We don't have to say anything. I don't even think the hour that we have allotted is enough time. Well, we'll, uh, we'll keep you here as long as we can. Uh, so with, that, uh, with the stuffed turkey and Farmer Bill Hatchet, I mean, it looks like you're putting the finishing touches on that. When is that stuff going to hit the market? For Thanksgiving. So we're literally putting the finishing touches on it. The bands are, are being made right now, and um, the production was done a few months ago. And we'll, we'll wait for the bands to get thrown on there, and then we'll get it into our warehouse, and uh, we'll start shipping probably in uh, late October, early November, just in time for uh, Thanksgiving. Wow. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Logan, did you have a follow-up question? I don't no. think your original question got answered, though. It didn't, but that's okay. I mean, I'm just mesmerized. <laughs> no, it's a good question, though. It was something, it was something about the uh, the business model. It's more, it's more from a, I mean, it's more of a financial question, right? Like, if you're doing, I mean, everyone knows that the more you do of something, the less the cost is, right, typically. Like oh, right. the Walmart model, right? Well, and I just don't make a lot of money. what you're doing is a boutique, because it's the <laughs> utmost boutique, because everything is small batch, right? But how, how do you how do you make money? Like how do you live? That's my question. You know, uh, okay. Well, I didn't think so. That would have been my answer. If you're, not, if you're not in this for the passion of it, if you're in this for the money, but you got to get out because with the difficulties the are are just. I mean, it's so it's so hard to get a cigar that burns right out to market. Uh, you know, the consumer sees the finished product on the shelf, and you know, it's, <laughs> if it has one little burn issue, you know, their heads explode. To have a cigar go from from field to the shelf, you can't even imagine what that takes. But it's, I'm almost, I almost like I want I, I say a, a prayer for every cigar that actually makes it to market because it's so so difficult. So if you're in this industry to try to make money, I mean very very big money. I mean forget about it. It's it's impossible. So I do it because it's my passion. I love what I do. I, there's, a, there's an old adage: if you love uh, what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Whatever. Yeah, so that's it. You know, I get up with a smile on my face. There is anxiety. There's a lot of pressure getting these things done correctly. VIA has had a lot of issues in the past uh, growing, but and that's part of the reason why I'm so thankful for my fans is that they're taking this journey along with me. There have been bumps in the road, but we get past them. We get better, and uh, we keep going. But no, to get in, to get into this uh, for the money, there are far easier ways to make a dime. <laughs> that's uh, that's not the first time we've heard that. Um, on that note, uh, we're going to take a break uh, real quick. We'll be right back with Andre from uh, the Ice Cigars. Hey, welcome back to Cigar Chat, brought to you live at CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Uh, we appreciate everything you guys are out there doing, keeping us safe. Uh, we're here hanging out with Andre. Uh, Farkas of uh, Viaje Cigars. Uh, Logan, this next segment brought to us by uh, our Project Manana. Uh, yeah, no crap. Fun, I totally forgot about that. Fundraiser that we got We're going raising on. Money so. for little Dominican kids. It's so, awesome. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead and tell the details. I'll make that. it quick. So starting the 2nd is when it started through the 25th, I believe. 
for raising money. It's our second annual Project Minyana fundraiser. If you go to Scarf Federation backslash Project Minyana, there's an ad right on the front page. You can't really miss it. We're giving away a basically raffle. We have a ton of cigars. You donate $10, you get a ticket. Every $100 gets you 11 tickets. Last year, we raised 5800 bucks. Everyone told me I was crazy. We don't want to raise 1500 We got my goal. This year, we're going for 6500 and we got some really cool stuff planned. So donate and donate a lot if you're helping Dominican kids. That's it. Yeah, there's some great prizes in there, too. So, um, Andre, I don't think we hit you up. By the way, good job. I don't think we hit you up. You did a good job. Did we hit Andre up for a prize on that? I don't think we did. No, we didn't. We just want his presence here. That's all we need. We'll we'll, we'll talk about that more offline. Yeah, but you Uh, guys have stuff coming, so, you know, whatever you need. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Um, So I'm going to keep busting out some of these questions. Uh, this one's from Texican8, or Texican8, or it's Texican is what I was talking about. Anyway, Texican. Uh, he says, what is your favorite cigar that you have made? Oh, I get asked that question a lot. It's like saying, which is your favorite child? The Power. first one. You know, I guess, Perfect. you know, Oro. Oro, it's not, I mean, you know, it's, it all started with Oro. I mean, that's really was the birthplace. I don't know if you guys know this, but we started with Hoya de Nicaragua. That mm-hmm. was the first factory we ever worked with. Um, it was a great relationship. We moved. Drew Estate came in and started doing their distribution. I felt they were very, very nice. Uh, Steve Saka uh, said, you know, you can stay if you'd like. And I said, no, thank you. You guys have so much going on. I feel like I'm in the way. I departed. I went to uh, work with the guy, the uh, Casa Fernandez guys and Raistas. Um, uh, but um, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? <laughs> Your favorite cigar favorite? that you made. Oh. Right, so 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 I, I moved on, and then so Oro was I started with Hoya Nicaragua, and that was Oro, and uh, so that was the birth that started everything. So I guess I have a soft place in my heart for the brand. Also, it received that fantastic rating, like I mentioned before, from Cigar Aficionado. Um, but I mean, favorite, I don't, I you know, at this point, I smoke so I'm smoking samples all day. I don't even really smoke you know regular stuff because we're constantly blending. I'm smoking so many samples. I I you know I don't even I don't even know anymore. Um, they're, can I just say, Oro's got a soft spot. Uh, they're all, but they're all my favorite. On an average day, how many cigars do you smoke? Hmm. That's a good question. Not as many as you think. I think there's like this idea that the manufacturers sit around and are smoking 10, 15 cigars a day. The only guy that, honestly, <laughs> the only guy that I know that smokes like 20 cigars a day is our master blender, Arsenio Ramos. He goes to sleep with a cigar in his mouth. He goes out. While he's sleeping, and the next morning, he wakes up and it's still there, and he lights it, and he goes on his day. I mean, we did a couple events together, and this guy, I mean, he must, he must, must have smoked 15 cigars that day. But for me, in any given day, there's this thing called, I don't know if it's an official term, it's called palate fatigue. Um, I, I, I know I suffer from it. If I smoke too many, I can't taste anything. There's no nuance anymore. It's just smoke. So I really try to limit myself. I'm doing probably, I don't if, if we're blending, it's a lot more. But any given day... I don't know, one, two. Okay. But even not when, that many. even when you're blending, you're not smoking a full cigar. I mean, you're no. you're you're smoking an inch or two, and, and on each one, and that's it. Uh, but then by the end of the day, all those inches add up. They add up five, six cigars, you know. You know, six feet of cigars, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so we got a couple more things, Logan. I'm just gonna keep going. Jump in whenever you want. By the way, Bobby. you guys like the Petit Lancero size? I'm a fan, Logan. This is our think? first one. We've never produced one. This is our first. I was actually going to ask you about the sizing of that because it looks like a Lonsdale to me. What yeah, size six, is that? Six by forty. Yeah, uh, pretty close. It's yeah. our first. Yeah, it's our first ever. We're actually thinking about. Well, we're trying to blend. Uh, uh, we're going to go with an exclusivo. There's been a lot of um, requests for a Petit Lancero, and we were going to do it in the exclusivo line. So we had the molds out, and I decided to fool around with something else. And so this is, was a uh, a test blend that we put together. It was the seventh iteration. On the seventh one, I think we nailed it. And that's where this got released. But this is actually the first, the first Petit Lancero we've ever uh, released at the company. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Uh, this one's from Jay Reiniger. And <laughs> this is actually kind of funny because I know exactly who he's talking about. Uh, he says, I've got a good friend who's a Viaje addict. He currently, his current stash is well over 1,000 cigars of just Viaje. Uh, and he's very close to being a quote-unquote Viaje Puro smoker. Uh, so do you guys offer any kind of counseling or anything like AA that can help him maybe smoke some other things? Nope, nope. nope. We encourage we encourage boredom. 
here. <laughs> if you find something that you like, I say stick with it, uh, especially you know if it comes to my brand. So please enjoy it. Uh, we and, and reach out to me. I support those that support me. As anyone, that is one of our mottos. So you can reach out to me uh, on Facebook, and if uh, your argument is convincing. You may get a package in the mail straight from Viaje headquarters. And thanks for your support of the brand. <laughs> you, you, you guys appreciate it. The the That's <laughs> funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Here come the emails. Um, now I know the guy who he's talking about. Uh, it's a guy named Jay Snake, and I, he's, I believe he's watching. Yeah, he's here. He's watching well, he the show. He joined the site today, I think. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of the guys from Cigar.com that I know from way back in the day. Uh, so his comment here, he says, "Yeah, I'm the friend that Jay is talking about. His name's Jay Snake." Uh, he says, I have, <clears throat> see, I have about 1,200 Viajes now and just counted uh, and just counted my other brand sticks, only 12 non-Viaje cigars. In this he only has 12 non-Viaje cigars. So that's 1%. 99% of his collection, and I think that Matt's right, uh, yeah, is, uh, is, is Viaje-centric. Viaje so uh, his question, though, he's, he does have a question here. Uh, so what's your favorite pairing with any Viaje cigar? So I guess the, the favorite pairing that you've had. Here's one. <clears throat> any uh, stout porters, anything sweet, amazing. Some rums will work. Um, I like also the nitro because I find the carbon dioxide, I mean, you can do it, but it, it, it's, not as, it's not as enjoyable. The nitro is where it's at, so smooth. Um, but anything sweet, man. Ports are great. Uh, not, I mean, a lot of guys are drinking wines. I don't, I don't find that to be that great. A sweeter wine, like a, you know, like a fortified wine, like a port, uh, is great. Anything on the sweeter side. I know guys that drink Coca Cola, and people might go, "What's that all about?" But it, it's, it's a perfect pairing. Anything, anything sweet will work with a cigar. Uh, if you want to do whites, like a Riesling, is great. Anything on the sweeter side. That's what I, the air on that side, and you really can't go wrong. That's, you touched on it again. We actually did our, our pairing show yesterday, and it was all with uh, soda, different sodas. And uh, I I paired a few different drinks, and my favorite one was uh, just an A&W cream soda. It was a great pairing. Just a nice. You, know, you nice, can do it. Shake it up a little bit and get some of the carbon dioxide out of it, so it doesn't. It's not biting. I think it's much more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna keep going through these questions here. Uh, Okay, this is a pretty specific question here. This one's from Burlesque. Great name. Uh, he says, first of all, big fan of your cigars. I have quite a stash. So my question is, uh, is the new white label WLPPLTB number seven? I think, is that what you're smoking? Yeah, that's exactly what you're smoking. Um, he says, is that the same blend as the Winter Classic from a few years ago? That was one of my favorites. No. No, Winter Classic. I love the cigar. It didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't get enough of a response. I'd love to release it. As in, you know, look, please reach out. If there's something you like, let us know. Um, you know, like like the stuffed turkey. That WLP was off the charts. Uh, the Winter Classic. It didn't get enough of a response to turn it into something other than a WLP. But if I hear people want it, I'll definitely do it. But no, the Winter Classic is a completely different blend to this. Uh, this latest release, this uh, test plan number seven. It doesn't even have a name. We're calling it TB number seven. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah, that was, I was reading the name that he put down there, and there's, uh... PLTB number seven. Petit yeah. Lancelo test plan number seven. Oh. oh that's, well, when you say it like that, it all makes sense. We try to be very cryptic. We try to do things <laughs> that no one can possibly understand. It's really, really difficult. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Because uh, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, "Wow, this is a pretty, uh, pretty serious name." Uh, but when you break it down like that, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, so it's cool. See, on the package here, we put all the uh, the pertinent information. Like the, the idea behind the WLP is, it's like a look behind the factory curtain. I don't have to worry about packaging. I can blend something up real quick and release it to market. Also, like I said in the past, if we make a mistake, we put the wrong wrapper on a cigar. You may smoke beautifully. Why trash the smoke? We'll release it as a WLP as a factory mistake. It doesn't mean that there's anything inferior about the tobacco. It just means that a wrong size was rolled, uh, the wrong uh, wrapper. I mean, these things happen, so we'll release it. So what's cool about this is it, it has all the, the information. It has the size, the production numbers, the uh, wrapper leaf, the date it was rolled. 
and then the name. So it's all on there. And then it's wrapped in Honduran newspaper. So if you're interested in reading, you can smoke the cigar and unravel it and catch up on today's news. Oh. <laughs> You give uh, you're giving everybody uh, the cigars and you're keeping them informed. Um, <clears throat> so a common theme on some of these questions um, is you, where can I find your cigars? There's a lot of guys that maybe they're in they're in kind of a, a strange place. They don't have too many uh, B and M's near them that carry you know small batch stuff or or what have you. I mean, is what I'm sure you get this question a lot. Is there a good place to point people toward uh, to find you know most of your stuff? If I mention someone in particular, I'll be accused of favoritism because there's a <laughs> lot. You got to be real political. Be a lot of you don't want to step on toes. So all I'll say is this: you can go to my website, guycigars.com. There is a beautiful list of retailers. Perfect. If you call a few of them, the chances are most of them will ship to you. Um, there are those that ship faster than others. You have to kind of look through it. But we're really, really like I'm not just. I think I've I've been I've been doing this a long time now, so this is no this is no nonsense. We're really selective with who we work with. They have to understand the model. I mean, there's some retailers that want something year round. I get that. God bless you. It's just not our model, so it may not work. So we're really really selective with who we work with. Uh, Viaje is a family of retailers. I could probably name every single shop owner I deal with by name. Um, that's how close we are, and so. Uh, it's a select group, and so I apologize. We don't have a widespread, widespread distribution as one of the larger companies, but I assure you this. If there is a cigar that you want that you cannot find, we will find it for you. It's not an issue. Hit us up on the Facebook. We'll point you in the right direction. We get emails constantly. I can't find the cigar. It's driving me crazy. Where do I go? We will point you in the right direction. So the myth that Viaje can be found is just that. It's a myth. If you do your due diligence... We will we will get you to the right place. Wow, I don't I don't think uh, I don't think we've ever had anybody say anything like that. No. Um, mm. Where you know I mean everybody a lot of people will say hey you know go to our website you can find a list whatever but to say if there's a specific cigar you're looking for and you can't find it let us know and we'll help you find it. That's with, with within reason. If you're looking for something we released five years ago, no. But like yeah. for instance, we just, we just had a release that you know sold out everywhere. I, I will. Someone in the office, if uh, a request comes in, we will be able to point you in a direction to find you that stand. Cool. Well, on that note, uh, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back after these uh, messages. Hey guys, welcome back to Cigar Chat, brought to you live at CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in, taking the time to hang out with us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are here with uh, Andre Farkas of Viaje Cigars, uh, having a good time uh, talking about uh, all kinds of cool stuff. That's a nice hat. It's a prototype. Well, I like it. it. They literally just came in today. Here's the back. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, what's cool about it is we use this 3D stitching so that it actually comes out of the hat. So and it's so like topographical, like a map? It's a big word. I don't even know what that means. I'm just going to say yes. It sounds good. <laughs> right. so these just came out, so I think we're going to go with it, so we'll have these soon. Those are pretty sweet. Yeah, that's a uh, flex fit. I like that. No need to beg. We're going to get some to you. No, no worries. I'm, I'm a medium large, or no, like a large extra large in those, I think. I got Done. Some, you guys will be uh, you I got guys a big dome. Out. I've, got a, I've got a big, got a big head. head. It's got nothing in it, but it's uh, it's a big head. Um, so let's see, Logan. I'm gonna keep ripping through these questions. Jump in whenever you like. As I said, uh, well, I, I mean, I can ask questions. You're just over there if, doing such a good job. Oh well, that's no. You're fine. Rest your rest your vocal cords. Then. Um, this one's from Punch Nubbit. Uh, he says the he loves the collaboration idea uh, with the new the new collaboration you're doing with uh, Casa Fernandez. Um, but he wants to know in the future, because I think, I'm not sure on this band if it says Casa Fernandez on it or not. I'm not looking at it right now. Uh, but he Man. wants to know how, how you're going to distinguish the, between the two, because I know you're going to be doing some newer ones in the future. Is it going to be like Collaboration 2.0? Are they going to have new bands, or, or what, what's the deal there? First off, and I, I keep going, We have I have a beer fridge in my office. I noticed it's right within arm's reach. That's uh, that's not a bad idea. Here's one of my, one of my you know, I'm in Southern California. Um we're spoiled in terms of craft beer. We've got a brewery on every corner. Uh, in uh, many of you know, in San Diego, there is a fantastic brewery called Stone. Uh, this 
is where I got the idea. You see that? Oh, it's almost exactly the same. Oh, okay. So Stone does collaborations, and I thought, what a fantastic idea to be able to share your craft with someone else in your industry, to come together collectively and, and produce something. I mean, it's amazing. I thought, let's bring this to the cigar world. Let's, let's have collaborative efforts, not only with cigar manufacturers, but how about retailers? How about uh, a personality in the industry? How about someone that just sends me an email with an idea, and, uh, and we go with it, and we give that person credit? I mean, we, we, don't, we don't like to confine our ideas. It can be anything. So I thought, let's do, this, let's do this collaboration. Let's bring it to the cigar industry. So that's where it came from. That was the idea. Um, what, we're, what we did last year is the band had Viaje and Casa Fernandez on, on either side of the band. I think what we're going to do going forward, it needs to be a little bit more prominent. We're going to add a secondary band with myself and whoever I'm working with on the foot of the band. Nice, thick band stated very clearly, so it'll, it'll, it'll add a little bit more to, to the project. So I can, I'm envisioning, I see that collaboration band... I see a black footband with the Scar Federation logo on it. I think that, oh. that sounds that sounds pretty good to me. Boom! Just gotta come. Just gotta come up with an intriguing idea for a blend or something, and uh, that's it. Well, that's Logan's department. <clears throat> this is how stars are made. See, see, it's gonna happen. Logan's Logan's the brains and the money. No, Logan. No, I would always want to do like your brains on drugs commercial, with like a frying egg in a pan. Just I don't know. I always thought that'd be fun. What does that have to do with anything? Just doing a cigar. You're bringing on drugs. I don't know. And having a little uh, egg. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, you know what I mean? And you could have a little egg as the band. I don't know. <laughs> you, guys, okay. you guys brainstorm. You come up with something and then pitch it pitch it, and we'll, we'll go. Oh, we'll pitch it. It's going to what's like that uh, like Shark Tank. You guys ever watch yeah. that show? Dude, right. I do. And yeah. they screw them on evaluations, too. That, you're not going to get your, your dollars worth there. <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be Mark Cuban. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't watch it enough to know the difference between all the different ones, but, um, wow, this is a long question. I'm going to skip that one for now. Um, okay, this one, this one's from Sherman here. He says, I love the uh, Exclusivo Leaded. I think Logan is a big fan of the Leaded as well. Best cigar ever. <clears throat> and that's what Sherman says. probably my favorite cigar. He says, can you tell the story behind the different tobaccos in that blend? A little bit of how you came up with that blend. No problem. It's, uh, it's fairly simple. We just added a component to the blend. Uh, we have great, great medio tempo leaf. Uh, it's it's a hard leaf to spot. It's a hard leaf to to get your hands on because there's not a whole lot of it. Very few plants actually have it. It comes from the top of the plant. Um, but if you get your hands on some and it's uh, fermented and aged properly, it's some of the tastiest leaf out there. So I thought I was at Nicaragua some years back at uh, the factory and I was smoking just straight Medio Tempo and I fell in love with the flavor and I thought, you know what, Exclusivo is such a great cigar line, what if we added a little bit to the blend, what would it do? And it just made it that much more full, that much more robust and then I thought, alright, well now I got this full robust cigar, it's Exclusivo, what do I call it? And I thought, alright, I'll just keep it Exclusivo but we'll add let it, meaning it's got some, some strength behind it. That's really the story. Of course, you know you got to tinker with it and make sure that you're blending it correctly. But I think, uh, man, when we finally came out with that final final batch and we smoked it, it was just we all looked at each other and go, "This is it." And I could, I really couldn't be happier um, with the way it turned out. And thank you for for uh, for the praise. Uh, you know, comments like that really make all the hard work worthwhile. We're us manufacturers, we're sensitive, man. We're putting our, our you are. And our, not you, but our love into this. When we hear when we hear positive back, I mean, it makes all that work out there. I mean, look, man, I got family. It, it's hard sometimes to leave and go to you know Nicaragua, and you're out there, and you're going in the fields, and you're in the factory day after day, and you're smoking, you're not sleeping. I mean, it's not easy. So when you hear someone say something nice about it, it really um, it really means a lot. And that's you know, that, you know, you can kind of um, segue into another topic of discussion, which is kind of the, the reason why I stayed away from the internet um, as long as I have is because there's so many, there's so much bashing it seems, and so much negativity online that you know, whenever whenever we hear something positive out of someone, it means so much because whenever you go online, there's just so much negativity. 
and uh, you know, wow, wow, you know, Andre's uh, Andre's complaining, but when when you put so much into something and someone just tears it down in a sentence like, oh, that cigar sucked. I mean, it, it really. I mean, we, I've developed a thick skin to it, you know, you have to, but when I first started out, I mean, it would send me, uh, you know, reeling, and that's why I've kind of stayed away. Now I think now that we're a little bit more established, we have a, a little bit more of a presence, I'm thinking now maybe I'll return and, and have more of a presence, and maybe we'll start with you guys, you know, Cigar uh, Federation, have more of a presence online. But that's the reason, that's the reason why you haven't seen a whole lot of me online, just because there was just so much negativity and misinformation. I couldn't police it all, so I just kind of stayed away. But maybe it's now a time for me to, uh, to come back. You've, you've, you've let it filter itself out. <clears throat> that, yeah, that's actually a pretty good, uh, a pretty good way to attack it. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow that up with. I, another, I got a question. Oh, you got another, oh, I got Which, a, which okay. review? Because obviously, the, you know, it sounds like there was a review that upset you a lot. And you don't have to tell me which person it was, but I'm curious. Which review did you read that just made you? absolutely just back away and say, I don't want anything to do with the interwebs. It wasn't so much one review, it was just some of the chat rooms and some of the things that would be said, just like, you know, just some, you know, some guy, you know, blasting it for something that maybe wasn't even, not even true, and then that gains steam, other people start piling on, and again, it, it goes back to the, the, the heart and soul, it goes back to the amount of time a manufacturer invests in trying to do what he feels is, is is a, is a great project, something great that people are going to get into, and then when people callously just you know tear it down, especially from those in the industry, you know it, it's really tough. But again, you know we've been now we're around the seven seven years. You know, I've been doing this since 1998. Um, but when it's your baby, it, 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 it hits it hits a little bit harder. But you know now it's been seven years. I think some time has passed. I, you know every new company goes through that that hazing period, and now maybe it's it's a good time for me to kind of return and, and have more of a presence online because I know there's a lot of guys out there with questions they want to interact and you know I just haven't had that presence so it's not fair to those guys so maybe maybe it's time to, to, to come back. Oh yeah, I would agree. So the rumor that viajes are made with unicorn dust is not true. Is what you're saying? No, 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 no. We use unicorn dust. U unicorn dust. Okay, I just want to make sure because that's unicorn what I. Unicorn dust and they are all rolled on the thighs of virgins. Ooh. Like what? Like Nicaraguan virgins? Like Honduran virgins? Yeah, you know, we're in Nicaragua, we're in Honduras, so but we don't discriminate. No, no. And that's you know that's part of the you know, the luster and the allure. <laughs> Dude, there actually is a cigar that you can buy that is rolled. They'll send you a video of it being rolled by naked chicks. Did you know that? That's a real know. thing. That's a real thing. And it's like a thousand bucks or something. Bill Williams was showing me he didn't buy the cigars. But anyways, that's random. But it's true. It's freaking true. And that old creeper would know about that. It's, it's, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know. I, I think that may, that may take away from a cigar's value. I don't, I don't know this person. I don't know where they've been. Have they showered? Uh, you know, yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ins and outs and what have yous. Yeah. yeah I don't know about a lot, but what have yous. <laughs> uh, okay, i got another one for the compliment bank here. Um, this one's from Big Chunks. Uh, he says, first of all, um, Viaje is one of my favorites, probably one of the top three brands that I smoke. Uh, he, says, uh, he always goes hunting for the new releases. Uh, he says, my question is, uh, will Viaje ever make an Exclusivo Connecticut Shade cigar for the morning smokers? I have been, I have fooled around with Connecticut a little bit. Uh, the, you know, I, ha I just haven't done anything with it because I haven't found... Well, see, we don't grow Connecticut Shade. So Agonorsa, so I don't have I would have to go somewhere else and get it. And so we really focus on what they do really really well, and that's you know Criollo and Corojo. So I haven't ventured out yet to. Um, we we did a little bit uh, some years back. We had some from another supplier, and it just the look was wrong and the flavor really didn't do anything for me. But you know, as someone that tries to be creative, to, to not do a Connecticut or to not do. You know any other you know something from Sumatra? You know that really limits me. So eventually we'll probably get around to it. But you know these last seven years we've really focused on the tobacco that we have at hand. Um, and so I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. But we fooled around with it. We just haven't used anything because it just wasn't a right fit. But we'll see. You never know what to expect from us. We may have something in the next couple of years. Okay. So that kind of actually leads into my next question. Uh, this one's from uh, the Nothing. Um, and I've never really asked him if that's a reference from uh, the Neverending Story or not. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> he says, "What are that? Well, yeah, that movie was awesome." What was uh, that guy's name? Uh, was it Atreyu? Atreyu, yeah. 
Balfour. About, yeah, and then the, the I like the big uh, flying dog, although I don't remember his name. And that's Balfour. Balfour. Then what was the horse? A tray, uh, a tray, you and uh, Ed. Ed? <laughs> Mr. No. Ed. No. Then yes, Mr. Ed was a horse, but that's a different. We're, we're getting off topic. Um, this is an old person thing or something. What the hell was the horse's name? Artex. Artex was the horse. And he could, and he, 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 he died in the swamp of sadness or something. In the yeah, in the swamp of sadness. And then there was that big turtle. That he was I'm reliving my youth up. right now. Yeah, he, Logan, you're you're too young to know anything. You, look it up, dude. Watch uh, the Neverending Story. Uh, I read the book. The book is not as good. Huh? Thirty. How old you? Thirty. I live a sheltered life, though. <laughs> we only had five stations, and they were like ABC, NBC, you know. Check out, out the, the Neverending Story. And check out the Dark Crystal. Oh yeah, awesome. The Dark Crystal's creepy though. That's a that's a, Jim Henson and uh, they like suck the life force out of these things. That messed me up as a stuff. kid. Yeah, that one was scary as a kid. I haven't watched it since, but uh, I see a shrink, and I think part of the reason why is because of that thing at a young age. <laughs> I, I blame my mother. <laughs> wow, it just got real. We got so sidetracked, and I think I heard the Bing Bing, so we're you up. Did. Uh, that's the end of our uh, AFRN broadcast. So. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> well, not, not yet. <laughs> well, it's over now. Fuck <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, well, anyways, well, let's let me let me wrap up the AFRN broadcast. So, guys, thanks for joining us uh, here on Cigar Federation uh, with, for Cigar Chat with uh, Andre Farkas, Viaje Cigars. Uh, really appreciate it, Andre. Thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate that. Uh, you guys can find us at CigarFederation.com. We will be back next week with uh, Warped Cigars. Looking forward to talking with Kyle from Warped, uh, one of the new companies out there on the market. So, again, uh, Andre, thanks so much. Guys, you can find us at CigarFederation.com. Everybody have a good weekend. Stay safe. Now we're fucking back. Now, now we're fucking under, back. God damn it. That's my you gotta explain, I think you have to explain why I said what I said because people are like, what the fuck just happened? Well, <laughs> why is this guy I'll, I'll, for no uh, reason? I'll go in there and do some magic with it. Yeah, but no, we let you guys are all familiar with it. If you're watching the show live, you're watching the video. You know that the first 45 minutes we got to be clean uh, for the uh, FCC stuff for the AFRN. And uh, I I told Andre about it. And honestly, dude, I'm surprised you got through the whole fucking show without saying fuck uh, <laughs> until right right at the like literally in the well, last the second. eleventh hour. Uh, the the yeah. It up. <laughs> and you were excited about it too. That was funny. That was that a passionate was, fuck. No. <laughs> It was it was like right here the entire time, you know. <laughs> oh man, that's too funny. Um, all right, so we've got uh, we've got a few minutes. We've got a, a bunch more questions to go through. Let's do the uh, giveaways really quick because I have a really great idea. Okay, let's do the giveaways. Okay. Although Jay Snake is the guy who ninety nine percent of his collection is anything. is Viaje, uh, and his uh, he has now said that you need to come out with a new Viaje F bomb. That'll be your new cigar. Okay. Well, actually, that was already done. By oh, somebody. was it? Yeah, somebody just did an F bomb, didn't they? No, that's uh, fuck uh, Espinosa. Yeah, with the La, La Bomba. Anyway, go ahead, Logan. Let's turn deep ways. We got uh, you disappeared. Your video's gone. Me? I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't see it. Um, well, anyways, I'm ugly. Anyways, but let me tell you about the contest. Yeah, go so, ahead. I, everyone, email me if you're watching. CigarFederation.com. Or shit, no, Logan at CigarFederation.com. Viaje in the subject line. And then I want you to tell me, legitimately, let's just say pretending, <coughs> hypothetically, we were going to do a community cigar for Cigar Federation with Yahe in the next year, maybe six months, who knows, what would you call it and why? And it can't be like, you can't call it like the cunt muscle, you can't call it something stupid, like a legitimate name and an idea. And what I'll do is I'm not going to announce the winner tonight because I want you to actually think about it. So email me by, say, tomorrow, 5 o'clock, end of business, Central Standard Time. Think about it and think about it. Is that fair? Because I want to know what they come up with. And then I will relay that feedback to Andre. How about that? I think it's We're fair. That sounds good. That's that's like the best. I don't know why. Whenever I click on your video, you disappear. Uh, that's the best question you've ever come up with, Logan. You're, well, Rob, I'm full of fucking genius. You and are. And really, I'm just really tired right now because the baby... Dude, we got this thing called the fucking sleep sheep. 
And I want to tell you about the sleep sheep real quick. Okay. It's a sheep that makes like noises like whales and like water and babbling brooks and shit. It's a and sheep? It's, it's a like, sheep. A like bed a sheep. Like, ah! Like, oh, ah! sheep. A like, sheep. Yeah, yeah. Got it. And I didn't believe in the sleep sheep <laughs> at all. So I, I thought it was gimmicky. I got one. Until I turned it on and it accidentally fell on top of her when she was freaking out. And it's not very big. It's like this big. <laughs> and it fell on top of her and she didn't move and she was instantaneously out. And we just kind of figured that out this afternoon. So I could have saved myself the last month a lot of headache by not I didn't use a sleep sheep. You know what else works really well? Better probably better than the sleep sheep is alcohol. <laughs> I've actually heard that people will do that, like when they're teething and stuff, they put a little bit on their gums. Shots. That doesn't work. It's not enough. It's not enough. No. Listen, wow. you make them. You make them a white Russian. <laughs> put it in the bottle. Done. Out. You don't, not only that, you only hear from them the next day. <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I am for whatever she sleeps all the way through the night. That's, 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 like the, that's like the best freaking day is when you actually sleep more than four hours. That's too funny. You throw a white rush into the bottle, you don't hear from them the next day either. That's funny. They're out. Uh, and, and, and just uh, here at Cigar Federation, we do not condone getting your babies drunk. We Unless die. you think I was being serious, that is a 100%. <laughs> Fabricated idea, story. No one's ever done that here. Yeah. Nor, nor does Viaje. They don't condone that either. Viaje does not support that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody would get pissed off about that. Um, Nobody. <clears throat> yeah. If I've offended anyone, I apologize. It was just oh, a joke, no. a humor. That's all. Okay. I get. You know, moving on. I want. I want to hit on some of these questions. I know we've we've only got a few minutes left. We had a ton. Uh, right. This one's from uh, Stefan Lind Lindblad, and I always I think I said his name right that time. Um, because I've heard that you compare your uh, small batch approach to microbrews, you specifically mentioned stone brewing as you did earlier. Um, <clears throat> when you blend a certain, when you blend certain cigars, do you have a beer or other pairing in mind, or or do you just, uh, or did you just use that as like a conceptual model? More conceptual. I don't, I don't like taste. Of, which would be a, a great idea for some future project is actually to blend something in collaboration with. Some spirits manufacture a beer, a, a, beer, a brewery. That's mm -hmm. a great idea, but no. Uh, when we are blending, it is either something on the lines of taste, right? You go one of two ways with us. Either it's, it, I have a taste profile, like so. We do a lot of stronger cigars. Now I'm starting to do more of the medium body stuff. So I'll go in the blend lab and we'll pull tobacco that I know will get me on that flavor profile, and then we start tweaking. The other way is I come up with an idea for a cigar. So if I came out with a cigar, let's say, called The Bull, I would probably want a cigar on the stronger side. If I released The Bull with a Connecticut shade that tasted like air, it wouldn't match up. So you go one of two ways. You blend for flavor profile, and then the packaging comes, or you have an idea for packaging, and you build flavor around that idea. Okay. Okay. Those are typically the two avenues, and most of the ideas, believe it or not, come when I'm in the shower and when I'm going to sleep. Those are the two. I've actually come up, and I'm trying to think. There was an actual line that we released that I dreamt of, and it turned into, and I'm forgetting which one it was right now. But I actually dreamt it and started work the next day. I remembered it, started work the next day, and it became a line. I'm trying to remember. We've done so many different things. They're now starting to escape me, but yeah. So when I go to sleep or when I'm in the shower, for whatever reason, those periods of time allow a lot of creativity, a lot of positive ions in the shower. Maybe I think the, I think the best on the shipper, for real. That's, that's there's I'm just saying. Like that's where I came up with the I idea. Did, I did an interview with uh, the guys over at uh, uh, Kiss My Ash, and uh, Abe said the exact same thing. <laughs> it's true, man. It's relaxing. I play a little Angry Birds Friends. Dude, I can think like a champ when I'm, I'm on the shitter. But anyways, I think a great cigar name, not that it really fucking matters if anybody will ever do it, is call a Connecticut, or it could be Ecuadorian or, you know, Connecticut probably doesn't matter, but a Connecticut cigar, Tiger Kitty Soft Paws. So you got a Connecticut, you think it's going to be mild, but one of the strong, I know, fucking A, man, boom, my gray matter everywhere. Wow. And that would be a strong Connecticut. Tiger Kitty Soft Paws. I've been begging people to make that cigar for fucking years, and no one has taken me up on it. It's gold, I tell you. It's gold. Dude, I'm telling you, it is gold, man. I'm telling you. 
So I was going to go into a question here from Man Angel, but you kind of covered it when you were talking about the uh, the uh, packaging and whatnot. Uh, he does follow up. He wants to know your top five favorite craft breweries. <clears throat> oh my God! There's so just many. Just off the top of your head. How about this? I'll just let you. Let's see what I got here. Okay. <laughs> Got Russian River. This is just what I have in this fridge. I got some Evil Twin Brewing. Does that say more Jesus? It's even more Jesus. <laughs> yes, please. Of course, I have Stone. Here's one of their vertical epics. Is that like a Lambic? No, no. Uh, here's from Deschutes, one of my favorite. This is the Abyss. I think we're at four. Yeah. Why are all your bottles like wine bottle size? <laughs> this is a fantastic uh, brewery, Ten Fifty. Oh. From uh, Oscar Blues, awesome stuff. So there's just there's a there's a little glimpse into what I have just to my immediate right. When you go to my house, it's a uh, it's a whole other story. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm, I'm looking at some of those, and I, I recognize some of those uh, breweries and some of those beers that you pulled up. And you're right, we are pretty spoiled out here in California. I mean, I can I can go down to Safeway and get some uh, some Evil Twin, and it's yeah. you know, just right at Safeway. I don't have to go anywhere special. Uh, <clears throat> but when you do find a, a, a good uh, liquor store, I've got one that's around the corner for me, and they've got hundreds and upon hundreds of different beers. Um, it's uh, it's pretty amazing to be able to go through some of that stuff. Um, <laughs> Uh, Donald. Logan, you got a question? Oh, no. I'm just laughing at some of these answers, like some of these ideas. Your first collaborative project was Ezra Zion, and it was called The Collective. To stay with the same meaning, the same vein of naming, you should call it The Gathering. The Gathering? <laughs> I don't know. Some of these are pretty funny, actually. That sounds like a little too Harry Potter-ish for me. It's hey, funny you say Harry Potter. Shirt it's it's funny that here. you say Harry Potter because there was a question. Yes, I am wearing a Hufflepuff. Quidditch t-shirt. And yes, that does make me a dork, but so what? But you brought up Harry Potter, so I thought I would share, and I saw that somebody else put it in the... Uh... It's all good. No, it's all good. <clears throat> and I don't have I kids. Way, I think, when, when are we going to see that uh, that those outtake B-roll? When's that going to happen? That's a good question. Boss, when is that going to happen? You know Canadians and their labor unions? You know how long that shit takes? What's, what's the Canadian word for tomorrow? We can't go with manana, manana, manana. Oh, that's Eddie Ortega's word, which, by the way, I finally did get by... Uh, Ortega Project's blend samples the other oh, day. Oh, I haven't gotten those yet. Well, you probably never will. Uh, <laughs> I, who knows? It's Eddie. But uh, I don't know, man. I mean, um, I, I could post the whole damn video, but it won't have as much effect having the B-roll. You know what I mean? I'm telling you guys, uh, you're going to get more hits on, this, on that footage than anything else you guys put out from the show. People are going to love it. I think Mark right. my word. And I think you may have changed the way that we do interviews from here on out when, when we're doing in person. Let it fly, baby. <laughs> we did it. We actually did it with Dissident, and it was... Oh, perfect. Quite, yeah, quite perfect guys ball. to do it with. Exactly. Those fucking assholes from Kansas, fucking jerks. Oh, we're yeah. going to have... We've got them coming on Cigar Chat. Talk about a, a, cool. an episode where we need the, the drop button. You're going to have to tell them a hundred times before... No f bombs during the first forty-five minutes. It's, That's for sure. With those guys, for sure. I don't know what. I, I, I'll definitely be tuning in for that one. But yeah, when you roll up to the booth or wherever, if you're at an event, just just hit record. Don't even tell them. Just just go. Yeah, I I, I think you're uh, you're definitely on to something there. Uh, I know we're coming up on the hour. Uh, <clears throat> I want to ask just a few more of these questions. Uh, this one's from Charlie. Uh, he says I'm smoking the uh, Exclusivo uh, Corona Gorda tonight. Uh, he says, "What is the difference between this blend and the Super Lance?" He says, "They're the same ring, he's the same ring gauge. That's why he's one three. Yeah, no, the the it's the same blend, but of course, the Super Lance is a, it's a Super Lancero. It's a seven and a half by. No, no, I don't, I don't. Is that right? I don't think so. I think the Super Lance was a forty-eight ring gauge, and the Corona Gorda is a forty-six. I could okay. be wrong. Could have scaled it back, but." But anyway, either either way, I mean, at this point, there's so I mean, I, to try to keep it all straight is <laughs> virtually impossible. But Could you uh, make a poster yeah. of all your scars so people can easily identify them. I think that would be fucking badass. Do a what? And you can release 
do a poster of a picture of all your cigars from the first release to the last release, and then you have a new poster that comes out with every cigar. That would be that would be a very very big project. It's aggressive. I thought you were going to say that's a piece of genius, but I'll wait for that. I'll wait for that also, comment. There. No, a piece of genius as well. And actually, let me find out real quick. Let me look in my inventory. Let's see if I can uh, answer this question real quick. Yeah, I'm not looking. I, yeah, I was right. I was right. It's a it's a 48. Okay, so the Super Lance is a 48, and the Corona Board is a 46. Oh, you know what? No, no. I think it may it may be a 46. Yeah, you know what? Okay, I'll tell you why. Okay, I'll tell you why. Here it is. I'll tell you why there's confusion. The original Super Lance was a 48. We switched it. So the the first uh, the first incarnation we did was a 48, and then I believe we switched it to a 46. So. Got it. Yeah, it's like yeah. So so it, it it's it's the same blend. It's just a longer version. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Um. So I, I think we'll wrap up on this one because this is a good question to end on. This is from, uh, Jared Grillet. I think I finally got his name right. Jared, I got your name right. It's it's not Garat. It's not whatever. It's Grillet. Um. <clears throat> says I have. <laughs> he's never smoked a Viaje cigar. Um. He, uh, for whatever reason, he never has. He says, if you were to suggest a cigar from one of your lines to try and to get me hooked, which one would it be? I would say start with something like Platino. It's uh, it's not as strong. I err on the side of strength, so most of my blends are medium plus to full. Uh, Platino is a great place to start because it's more straight medium. It's a lot more. It's it's a, it's a lot more approachable. I think late harvest. It's also a great place to uh, to start. That's also in the medium. Um, hang time was a lot was was stronger, but the regular late harvest was in the medium range. Those two right there. Uh, Summer fest as well, I think, is also pretty approachable. But guys, don't forget, we don't really make anything mild to medium, so you're gonna get some strength with it. But they, those two suggestions, I think, will get you started, and then you can slowly, you know, get as you get more seasoned, I think you can take a little bit more of the uh, the stronger stuff. Okay. Now, a question about the a question for me about the Oro has has that changed at all over the years? That's always been my favorite one. That's always been my favorite release of yours. It's the Thank first you. one I ever smoked, and it's always been my favorite. But the only change the only change was going from white Nicaragua to uh, Rices. Uh, okay. Other than that, the blend has uh, has really is really we try to be as consistent as we can. It's really stayed stayed the same. Um, you're gonna find a difference between the Reserva and the regular line. Sure. But um, but that's only because it's a different thing. But no, Oro has really it's really stayed uh, stayed the same blend. So the the Platino and the Oro are really your only core lines, if you want. No, to. no, no, those are small batch too. We, we really? switched it all. Yeah, a few years back, we switched everything. It's all everything now is a small batch. But I should say this: we have, we get so many requests from not only retailers but consumers for something more consistent that we're now considering releasing a line or two year round. Okay. So we'll say, ask question. Um, you know, I don't want to say exactly what it is, but we're working on it right now. Just turning something that we're doing existing at small batch, but turning that into a quote unquote a core year round release. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Logan, you got any more questions? No man. I want my poster with all the IA releases on it. <laughs> You're gonna have to make it. Yeah. Dude, I think, dude, and you I know what? Send me one so I have a copy. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that could be collector's items. I'll, I'll, I'll start working on it now. How about that? I'll put my I'll put my design skills to work. They're they're beginning to atrophy. I don't really get to design anything fun anymore. Uh, no, no. I'll uh, I'll I'll make that a pet project. It'll be when's your birthday, Logan? Um, in about eight days. Wow. Well, shit. It's not going to be done for this year. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be waiting on it for twenty years. Yeah, it'll be it'll be yeah, next so year. Here's twelve. Birthday. You know that. Next Here's year. twenty fourth, right? Yeah, mine's actually coming up, too. Oh, shit. It's fucked up, but I know your birthday. You don't know mine, fucking asshole. Yeah, but I actually, this is, see, Andre, we do this a lot. We, we bicker like an old married couple. I actually bought you a birthday present last year. Hey, the reason I, listen. Uh, yeah. I, I Contro know Controversy is very good for ratings. Yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, hey. I, you're Which, right. You bought me something, and you bought me a Christmas present before. So I, I do appreciate your gift giving. The Lawlers do not give gifts, and you've heard the story why. Like, I don't get my wife gifts, I don't get my family gifts, I don't do any of that. Because of my experience. Just stories because you're no fun. No, it's because my parents fucking ruined it for me when I was like six years old. 
Oh, do you, no, all, do you also celebrate Festivus? <laughs> no, we just kind of like call each other and say we love each other. And, I'm not sure he's getting the reference. No, yeah, I know. Other than strength or anything, you know, airing of grievances. No, I mean we just uh, listen. I'm telling you, no, I don't. No, no, no. I'm telling you, we're scarred for life. And you're right. both yell, fuck off. Well, I'll, I'll still. Uh, I'm, yeah, your birthday gift's gonna be a little bit late, but. Uh, Andre, man, we got through probably about half the questions, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to have you come back on. Uh, we'll save him for next time. <laughs> save him for next time. Have you come back on? Uh, you know, maybe early next year, and we can uh, you know talk about what's coming up. Really do appreciate you hanging out, man. It was a lot of fun hanging out, chatting with you. Um, get your fish oil, guys. It's really good for you. I want to leave on that note. You got to get your fish oil in. It's important. What is what does fish oil do for you? Fish oil, man. I don't know. That, my doctor said. My doctor said I'm looking. I'm looking at stuff around my desk to bring into focus. Uh, I'm doing fish oil. And I'm doing a couple of these. We got the uh, vitamins. Oh, those are good for you. Those are good. Those are good. When I get a headache, which is pretty much every day, you know, around this office, I do a little of that. Yeah. You know. What else? I got my Dupont Extend, the greatest lighter ever created. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, no. In case. In case you know your lips get chapped, you got your your birds bees, and uh, I don't know. Those are the most those are the most uh, entertaining, exciting. Th oh, and of course, Purell, baby. You gotta have oh it. yeah, that's that's a must. That's you a ever shake that hand, and when you get done, there's like there's you like something dripping from it. There you go. Yeah. It's right there on the desk. You gotta have that. Yeah, it's, it's... I just I snort it now. That, that Purell. <laughs> I cleanse. I cleanse from within. Oh man, That's, uh, that can't be good. That can't be good. Uh, Andre, man, appreciate it. Uh, guys, we'll. Uh, I think we're gonna pick six winners, Logan, and we'll um, yeah. we'll post it up on the site. Maybe tomorrow or the next day or something like that. Well, they got it Friday at five. <clears throat> oh, till Friday. Okay, so maybe yeah, we'll post it up early get next some week. Into this shit. Yeah. You know? Well, let's give them. Yeah, give them till Friday. We'll post it up early next week. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'm good for them. I ship everything out. Yeah, you do. Now let me just say something. On a, on a more serious note, I just want to thank you guys before we go for having me. I mean, really, it's it's an honor to be here. Um, really, I wasn't I wasn't fooling around. Like you guys coming by the booth it was much appreciated. I really enjoyed meeting you. Um, I think you guys uh, do a fantastic job and a real service to this industry. You guys are I said this before the go between the manufacturer and the consumer when we're at the show or we're doing an event or something. This information is really really important and people get a kick out of watching it. It informs them. It, 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 it's, it's a great service. You guys do a really, really great job at doing it. So first, thanks to you, and of course, thank you to all the, the fans. And, uh, you know, it, it's very cliche, but honestly, if I didn't have the support of people, support to, uh, to do what – if I didn't have the people's support, I couldn't do what I do and do what I love. And, and if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be locked up in some insane asylum. So i got to thank all the people for, for supporting the brand and allowing me to be creative and – and, and come and, and share this journey with me. So, so, so big thanks to you guys and to all the guys that are watching. Um, you could be anywhere in the world, but you're you're here with us, and I, I really appreciate that. And it's not lost on me. So, thank you very very much. Thank you. Compliment bank, Logan. I know that's good. that's definitely getting cut out by Surgeon as a, a promo video of how badass we are. <laughs> it's gonna be the new trailer for our YouTube channel. Exactly. <clears throat> Andre, appreciate it, man. Big time. Um, Guys, thanks for checking out the show, CigarFederation.com. Uh, you can find us there. We're there all the time, every day of the week. Mm -hmm. We're even open on holidays. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Next week. You know what else? Oh, real men wear glasses. That's I, fucking true. Yeah, legit. Because we we take all that power from our brain and put it somewhere else. We don't have enough to give to our ojos. That's right. So we've all got the the uh, the ocular issues, but. Um, uh, so we've got next week. We're on Monday. Monday, <clears throat> Monday uh, different time. I've got a weird Good boy. Schedule. Yeah, with uh, uh, Kyle from Warp Cigars. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, same time, just different uh, different day. Hey, Monday, uh, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks again, uh, Andre. Appreciate it. Everybody have a good weekend, and uh, everybody uh, be nice to each other. How about that?